Sarah. Hey, guys. Uh, Sarah's going to be doing dog classes out here on Wednesdays for uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Uh, Wednesday's night. Nice. Do you work with Mackenzie? Yeah, she's our that happens, or I own works for you. It works for me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Do you want to explain a little bit about Sid and what you do? Sure. And who you are? Yeah. I'm in Sarah Spencer Hall, and I own Sid Hopkins Dog Training Center in Missoula. So we're a dog training center and a dog daycare. So we offer all kinds of different dog training classes, everything from puppy classes through obedience classes, and all kinds of dog sports. So we do agility, and we do rally obedience, and freestyle, and all kinds of fun stuff. Scent detection is our newest addition. But yeah, and then we do it. Oh, so it's taken. Yeah. Scent detection and... Yeah, also done actually quite a few of our classes. Dogs. Yep. Puppy classes. Yep. And he's done our CU class mm-hmm. with Mackenzie, so... And you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So there's lots of different stuff going on. And then we have daycare. Mm-hmm. Which sometimes Mackenzie does for me on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And yep. He does some training with the daycare dogs. Yeah. Yeah. We torture them with some videos. Yeah. We torture them making them leave hot dogs alone and stuff. Great. Is pizza? Last week with pizza. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun there. And how long have you been doing dog training and... 17 and a half years okay. now. Okay. And you, okay. Do, you do agility too. I do. And I've been You're competing. Dog. Yeah. I've been competing in that for 17 years. I also used to be a judge. All right. And we actually came and did a demo here. Yep. Yeah. Last year. Last year. Yeah. 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 So, very cool. Well, thank you. You're welcome. It's like your second class in the show. guys. Master's and Ph.D. level. Outside. Yay! Because you guys both passed your bachelor's degree. This is awesome. So, what we're going to be doing, have you guys been on the My Dog Has Class website at all? I haven't been. Since you passed the test? Okay. So, if you want to go through there, you can. It talks about all the different skills, the requirements for it. And what I'll do is I'll email you guys a link to those things that tell you specifically what each task is. And so what we're planning on doing for the next six weeks is working through those tasks using fun games so that we can make it generalized for the dogs. And now we've got this big distracting outdoor environment, which is super cool, because that'll help with that as well. So that's what we're going to be doing, is playing games each week, doing those different skills. And for this level, I generally try and incorporate the Masters and the PhD, because I find by by the time you guys get to this level, it's pretty easy to move through two levels of skills in six weeks. And maybe not to perfection, but we'll definitely approach that pretty close. Good girl, Bailey. She's like, no, guys, no big deal. All right, so we just wanted to start out by introducing you guys and your dogs. So our little online family can know who you guys are. Do so you guys want to start with Hugo? And I'll come stand near you so the mic will pick you up. Three and a half year old yellow lab. Uh, we got him when he was a six week old baby, and uh, we've gone to first go fetch for companion manners, and, yep. and now it's what happens. So we are excited. He's a great dog. He would do well to deal with distractions. Yeah, and, and with listening. But uh, my name is Katie George, and this is my master. And your ultimate goal is to have him as a service dog. Your ultimate goal is to have him as a service dog. Well, that's good. This is a good stepping stone for that. So. Perfect. I'm excited. It's going to be fun, right, buddy? He's a fun dog. He loves everyone. And I've been Hugo since he was the size of his head, so it's cool for me to get to watch him grow up. All right. We'll go over here with Lynn and Bailey. All right. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Good girl. I'm Lynn, and this is my dog, Bailey, and she is a rescue pit bull. I got her from Boise Bully Breed Rescue. Um, in Boise, Idaho, and I got her on December 1st. So they think she's about a year old when I got her, and we really enjoyed working together and her learning lots of new things and have lots more to learn. Yeah. And Bailey's doing lots of classes with me. Currently, she's also doing agility as well as this, so. And she loves it. Yeah, she's doing really good. All right. So what I wanted to start with, was just to let you guys kind of wander around the space for about five minutes. Just let them kind of settle into the space. Let them sniff and get that out of the way. Because any time you bring a dog into a new environment, all they want to do is check it out. So I find by giving them about five minutes just to wander around, check everything out, then when we move on and go to work, then they're ready to do that. So, go ahead. You can practice your loose leash walking if you want, or you can just let them sniff. Just kind of keep them in their own personal space. But we'll give you guys just a few minutes to do that, and then we'll get 
just did some work. Many different smells. is when they're greeting people on the trails, if the person has a dog, he loves to go visit the people and the dogs, but he's going to go visit the dogs and then jump on the people. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing that, number one is just make sure that he's thinking and he's in kind of a calm state before you let them run up to the people. Obviously, he's going to be excited to see the people and the dogs. So the trick is going to be get him to calm down and then his reward can be going to greet the people. And we're going to work a lot on meet and greets with people in this class. But part of that starts with not letting him go up to them when he's already in a super excited state. Okay. So, if he can't control himself and be calm, then he can't go say hi. That's basically what we're going to be working on. So that way, his reward for being calm is getting to go do what he wants to do. Okay. And then even if you don't have food or anything with you, you can still be using what he really, really wants as his reward. Right. Well, yeah. always have food with us. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to try that. But sometimes that's not as big of a reward as getting to go say hi to people. Yeah, he loves that. Yeah. He loves that. Yeah, so we can just use that to our advantage. That's no big deal. And that's good because then just in case you don't have food, it doesn't matter. Because eventually you want to get rid of the food anyway. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> food oriented. Yeah. Food. It was a map. We love food. Yeah. All right. How are we doing? Are you guys ready to work? We got to check everything out? All right. So, what I wanted to start today with, because we're in a new environment, because they've never been here before, it'd be different if we were in the training center where they've both been, but what I wanted to start with was our name attention game, so getting them to respond to their name immediately and every time that we call them, because that way we can kind of distract them off of whatever it is they're trying to check out, whether it's people, or other dogs, or sniffing the grass, there's some horse poop in here. <laughs> I'm sure we all found that. All right, so for name attention, this is just to get them warmed up and paying attention and ready to work. So what we're going to do, because we're outside and there's grass, we don't necessarily want to throw our food on the ground. So we're kind of moving to the next level of name attention. So what we're going to do is let the dogs get distracted by something, which they both are. As soon as that happens, I want you to call their name once, wait for them to turn around and look at you. It doesn't have to be eye contact. I just want them to acknowledge that you exist. As soon as they look at you, I want you to mark that somehow. Have you guys been using clickers with Hugo? We haven't. Okay. Oh. But we talked about using a marker word, like yes or good. Okay. So you can use that for your marker. Just pick. Not really. I 
would use I would use good or yes or yay or something short, but something that's going to predict every time you hear this word, I'm going to give you a treat. So they start to understand. Oh, every time you hear this, my treat's going to come. You guys are going to use it quicker. Okay. So for Bailey, it's going to be as soon as she looks at you, click. As soon as Hugo looks at you, you're going to use your marker word, whatever it is, and then follow that up with a treat. Then you can just let them get distracted again. If they're busy staring at you, just kind of wander around until they start getting distracted. Call them again. As soon as they turn back to you, mark. Give them their treat. Okay? So let's just try a few repetitions of that, getting them focused and working. You have a nice sprinkler over there. Nice. Nice. Good job, Katie. Good. That was really nice, Lynn. Good job. Good job. All right. So now that we've got them a little bit warmed up, what I want you guys to do is make sure you don't have any food in your hands. So have it in a pouch or have it in a pocket or something. Don't pull it out until after you've marked. So call their name, soon as they look at you, you can click. You guys can mark with your word and then reach in and pull out your treat and give it to them. Okay, because I think she's concentrating too much on the food in your hands. And ultimately, you guys are in an advanced class where you don't want any food in your hands anyway. Great. So go ahead and try that, you guys. Nice. Good. Good. And so don't have your hand anywhere near your pouch. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm wandering closer as a distraction for you. <laughs> Good. You go. You go. Uh, nice. Good job, Katie. That looks nice, Lynn. She's really responding. Good job. Nice. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to make this harder for you. Uh, there, no color. Perfect. This is getting more distracting than Sarah with her pouch full of stuff, right? Oh, so yeah. Nice. So do you see how she depends a lot on you reaching for that pouch? Yeah. Good. So that's just what we have to say out. Good job, kid. Oh. All right, so it's awesome with Hugo. All right, go ahead and give him a last try that, guys. That looks really nice. Good. So ultimately in this class, what I want you guys to start thinking about is making your training a little bit cleaner, because you're advanced now. Which means not having food in your hand, we're not using it as a bribe for them. What we want to do is use it more as a reward. So don't have it in your hand, have it in your pocket or your pouch or something so it's hidden. And it doesn't come out until after you've marked the correct behavior. But yeah. What do you think about not giving him freedom? We can, uh, yeah. He's doing it very well, but if, if, uh, right. we always done it for us. So the question is, what about giving them a treat every time? Are we going to get rid of that? Yes, we are. I'm just making it super easy on them right now because we're in a brand new environment and it's super distracting and I want them to start by being successful. But yes, we are going to transfer to more of a variable reinforcement schedule, which means not giving a treat every time, but maybe we'll give it every third time and then every fifth time. And maybe we'll give it two times in a row and then we won't give it to them for another seven times. So we're making it unpredictable, so they don't know when the treat is coming. <laughs> Humans are the harder part of the deal. Right. And have 
having traits with you all the time is good because what you guys are doing is making a huge reinforcement history for these dogs. So that doing these behaviors are super rewarding for them, which is going to make fading the traits out easier, ultimately. So it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Someone's asking if she should not use her pouch and use a pocket instead. I actually prefer pockets, just because then it's not a huge visual signal that the dog, okay, we're working because I have my pouch on. I'm just using this because I don't have any decent pockets right now. But yeah, if I've got a jacket on, I usually put my treats in a pouch or in a pocket so that they can't see them. Yes, they can smell them, but every piece of clothing I own smells like food, even if it doesn't have food in it. So, you know, my dog's... They know that sometimes the food is there and sometimes it's not. Even though all my clothes smell like food. Yeah. So, and I actually have a designated dog mess. So when I have my designated dog mess, yeah, that thing reeks like food no matter what I do to it. Even if I wash it, I'm sure it still smells like food. So, yes. I like pockets. Just because they're not a visual cue. And when you guys are doing your test, you're not going to be able to have your pouch on you if, you if you're using a pouch. But you can have pockets on you, obviously. And even if your pockets smell like food, it's not a big deal. Yeah, so we can absolutely fade that out. Good. So what I want to move to now is I want to work on doing a little bit of cum. So getting them actually moving towards us more than they already are. So for class, when you guys come back next class, what I'd like you to do is if you have a long line, bring it with you. Because we have a nice big outdoor space, so we have a lot of room to move around. And with four of you in the class, which is what it's going to be next week, we're still going to have enough room to run around with, like, 20-foot long lines in here. I like 20, at least 20. Yeah, because it gives you enough distance from them that you're really working on getting a solid recall from distance. But it's not so long that you're going to get all tangled up in it and wrap it around everything. Not that we have many obstacles in here, but, yeah. At least 20 feet, 30 would be okay. Yeah, but if you've got one at home, bring it with you, because then we can use this. And you've been bringing Bailey's blanket, which is perfect. So she has a, a space to go back to, which is perfect. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of work on cum. So what we're going to do for this is, again, just let them get distracted, call their name, wait till they look at us before we give them the cue to come. And the reason we're doing that is because if we turn their name and the cue to come into one word, if I say, Doug, come, and they're still ignoring me and sniffing something, what am I naming? Them sniffing. Yeah. So I want to make sure I get their attention first before I give them the next piece of information. Then it's more clear to them, and we're going to get a faster response. And when you're building foundation, that's what we want to do. Set them up for success. Set them up for quick responses so we can reward those. And that's what makes it really solid and reliable in the long run. So let them get interested in something. Call their name. As soon as they look at you, you want to say, come, or whatever your come word is. Let them move towards you. And you can move away from them. So you can move a little bit and kind of encourage them to chase you, because that'll make it super fun. And then as they're moving towards you, that's when you're going to mark. So you're marking them for the actual act of coming. If you think they'll stay with you, you could just drop the leash, and if they decide to leave, you can step on it. Yeah. Yeah. And with there's two of you moving around, it's probably not as distracting as the four of you are running around. But, yeah. And if you just decide to leave, just step on the end of the leash so he can't take off. Not that I expect them to. But, yeah, go ahead. Let's try that, you guys. Oh, we found the water. <laughs> That's why I used a collapsible bowl. Yeah, that was perfect. Nice one. That looks really good. I get up. Yeah, there you go. Nice. That can be the distraction. You go. You go. So move. Katie, just move so you can catch his attention. You go. Keep moving. There we go. There, perfect. Nice. Good. You go. Good. 
just move around Katie, so you see more exciting. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Good job. All right, let's give them a rest for a sec. Good job, guys. That's looking pretty good. Nice job. A little bit of distraction. <laughs> so, you guys may have heard me telling Katie that when he was having trouble coming to you just to move, the reason I said that is because when you move, you become animated and excited. If you're just standing still and you're saying, dogs, come, or even if you're just doing this, that's not as exciting as, dogs, come, you yeah, have everybody, let's come, yeah! <laughs> I rest my case. So, if you're having trouble, just up your energy level a little bit and just move. You don't have to move fast and you don't have to move far. Just move a little bit. Be more animated. And you don't have to be as freaky and crazy as I was just being. But just move your body. Because dogs have 270 degrees of vision, which means even if I'm behind him, he can see me when I move. See? As soon as I was moving, I caught his attention. And that's why you'll notice when there's some little furry creature moving, like a squirrel, as soon as it moves, that's when they totally zone in on it, right? If it's sitting still in a tree, it's not nearly as exciting. It's when they move. So, come pray. Move. And that makes the game fun for them. If they can chase you, yeah, it's going to make it much more reliable because it's fun for them to come. It's a game. You like game. Then you don't need your food as much. That's when you can start getting rid of it. Is by rewarding him doing something else. Like running so he can chase you and have fun. All right. So, that was good. And next week we'll kind of incorporate the long line so we can do it with more distance and let them get a little bit more distracted. Especially when there's four dogs in here. That'll be a little bit more distracting, right? And that way we can keep it safe, too, just so that nobody's having a giant dog pile in the middle of the arena. <laughs> All right. So, the next thing I wanted to work on was offered attention and eye contact. Because this is one of the tasks that you guys have to do. You're going to need to have 15 seconds of eye contact, ultimately, while somebody knocks on something and comes into the room. Yeah, big distraction. So... Obviously, we're not starting with that much distraction. We just want to go for brief periods of eye contact if we can in the beginning. And that starts with just even offered attention. The attention that we're not asking for, we're not calling their name, we're not doing anything else. We're just letting them kind of figure it out by accidentally looking at us, and we're going to reward that. Because once you start rewarding offered eye contact and offered attention, then they start offering it even more because we're not asking them for it. Because what happens is if we teach them that we're always going to ask for behavior, they keep waiting until we ask. But if we don't ask, they'll start offering it even more frequently to us. So that's what we want to kind of get into their head, is that we're going to just reward you anytime you check in with me on your own. That'll help with the recall, and that'll help with greeting people too excitedly. <laughs> so it'll help make it a little bit calmer. So what I want to do with this is I want you guys to sit in your chairs, if your dog glances at you, I want you to mark that, either with your word or your clicker, and then just take a treat and set it down in the grass. Don't throw it because that'll be too hard for them to find. Just set it down. But what we're doing by doing that is we're just getting them to look away from us because they're going to look down to pick up the treat. As soon as they've got the treat and they look back at us, mark it again, then set your treat on the ground. So we're going to do this starting with sitting because it's easier, and then we're going to switch to standing and ultimately to moving around, and that will really help us with our loose leash walking. question is, can they see our eyes through sunglasses? It depends. On the sunglasses. Yeah, it depends on the sunglasses. I can see your eyes from here, so he can. Yeah, so I wouldn't worry about yours. Mine are really mirrored. So mirrored glasses definitely make it harder. If your dog knows the behavior, they'll still stare at your sunglasses. But if you're beginning, if it's just in the very, very beginning, I would probably not be wearing mirrored sunglasses while doing it. If you're going for the eye contact thing. Right now, we're just going for any sort of attention. There you go. Good. Good. So even if he glances at your body anywhere, Katie, go with that in the beginning. Because this is tough. 
There you go. Perfect. Good. Yeah, so drop your treat off to the side so she looks away. So she has to actually make an effort to look back at you. There you go. Good. So I think Bailey's ready for you to stand up, Lynn. There you go. There you go. Hi. So the trick with Hugo is going to be catching him and making your rate of reinforcement a lot faster. Oh, really? Because when he picks up the treat and lifts up his head, he's looking at you. Right. And you don't mark it, and then he looks away. So as soon as he picks up, if he looks at you, go ahead and mark that. Because it will be going to make it super easy for him, because yeah. then you're going to go through everything so much faster. There you go. Perfect. Now you got him. There. Now you got it. Yeah, there you go. Good job, buddy. Good. So go ahead and stand up. That'll make it a little bit harder. Good. Nice. Good job, Lynn. And so for Bailey, because I know we played this game with her before, we can make it a little bit tougher for her. So you can ask for more than just staring at your hand. So at least looking up near your face. Maybe not eye contact, but at least up near your face. Yeah, I, I've been trying to put Nice. Yeah. And I know she's played this game before in the bachelor's level, so. Uh, Good. All right. Lena, I think you can start moving around. Uh, and just be careful about having your hand in your pocket. <laughs> He's getting it. Good job, buddy. Nice. Good. So I think you can... That's okay right now. We'll gradually work up to eye contact. Okay, so go ahead and start moving around with him. Anytime he glances back at you, you can reward that. There you go. So don't say anything to him. You don't want to beg him for attention, but anytime he happens to glance at you, you can mark that. Perfect. Good job, Katie. Nice. Good job, Bailey. Good job, kid. Nice job. Nice. So, Lynn, if you find that she's getting too far ahead of you and making the leash tight or she's going out to the side, just go the opposite direction. And you don't have to say anything to her. Just let her figure out that it's offering you the attention that's going to get that. Good girl. There you go. Perfect. Good. And same thing with Hugo. If you find that he's getting ahead of you and making the leash really tight, what you can do is just go the opposite direction. So if he's coming this way towards me, you just want to go that way. If he's going that way, you go that way. Yeah. Like something to sniff or people to visit. Good. We're running out of treats. I've got some extra for you if you need them. Yeah, 
Especially when you're working in an arena full of horses. <laughs> and we'll play them out. Week one, we're just trying to make it super successful, super easy. Because that's setting us up better for next week, too. Good job. All right. Go ahead and give them a rest, you guys. Nice. Okay. So what we're going to switch it up to now is we're going to call, we're going to play a game that I call I Spy. You guys remember playing this when you were little? I Spy with my little eye. Something that is blue. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a body handling game for the dogs. So being able to handle every part of your dog without them being weird about it is important, and it's also one of the task items. Part of the meet and greet when you get to the PhD level is somebody strange has to be able to come up and be able to pet your dog in the head and touch their ears and touch their feet. So, yeah, yeah. You get a choice between ears or teeth. Yeah. So, for Bailey, does she have any part of her body that she's a little bit iffy about letting you touch? She's good with everything? Okay, that's good, because at least she lets you do that. How about Hugo? Feet, toenails, perfect, awesome. All right, so I'm going to yell out something that I want you guys to touch on your dog. If they decide in this environment because it's distracting that they're not so into that, just pair that with a treat. So I'm going to touch your ear and feed you a treat. Or I'm going to lift your lips and feed you a treat. Does that make sense? So we just want to make positive associations even in a distracting environment. All right. So I spy my dog's tail. Ah. He's like, I'm not so sure about that one. Good. All right. I spy my dog's ear. I don't care which one. Yeah, you can give him a tree if you want. So for both of them, they seem to enjoy physical touch, so that's kind of a reward in itself. Except he wasn't so sure about his tail. <laughs> he was like, wah! Not out here with the wind and stuff. All right. I spy your dog's left front paw. Yeah, whatever. I'm easy. <laughs> I'll go for any front paw. All right. I spy your dog's collar. Perfect, you guys. Nice job. Beautiful. All right. I spy your dog's other ear. Nice. All right. I spy your dog's back. Nice. Very good. All right. Well, now I got to do it. I spy Bailey's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> nice. No, she likes that one, which is good. All right. I spy your dog's back feet. Both of them. Uh, he thinks this is some sort of game. Good boy. Good. So try distracting him with a treat while you do it. Do you need any more? We still got some. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Bailey's like, ah, I'm not so sure about that. That's weird. Good job. So, I know, I'm bringing your mom treats. You don't get them from me, kid. You can break those up. All right. I spy my dog's nose. <laughs> Very good. All right, I spy my dog's teeth. Good boy, Hugo. Good boy, Bailey. She's like, I'm going to turn into a puddle. Yay! Yeah, I like that one. That was good. All right. I spy my dog's chest. Perfect. I spy my dog's tail again. Oh, there we go. Good boy. There we go. Good job, guys. 
All right. Go ahead and give them a little bit of a rest. Good. That's pretty good. They were a little weirded out by their back end. Yep. Outside, apparently, touching behind their hips is weird. Yeah. So, what I would encourage you guys to do at home is, anytime you guys are outside, just every once in a while reach down and touch them behind their hips. Because that seemed to be kind of a little bit of a weird area for both of them. Yeah. So, back feet, hips, back legs, tail. And just, you know, touch it. You don't have to, like, grab onto it and yank on it or anything. Just touch it. Now we're going to keep playing with this as we go along, and then we're going to turn it into me coming over and being able to touch them. So we want them to be okay with you, people that they trust first, before I start coming in there and manhandling them. Although, Bailey pretty much forces herself on me every time I see her. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting down on my lap. We know that one. All right. So what I want to work on next is a little bit of sit down and stand. So, how many of these dogs know how to sit on cue? Both? Okay. And down? Perfect. How about stand? Working on it? Yeah. Or getting them to stand up for a sit? Not really? Okay. That's pretty much what I expect. Right. Ultimately, it's going to be like a sit, stand, or a down. Stand without moving around too much. We just want them to stand up. Cool. So we can start working on this. But what I want to do is no food in your hands if you can get away with it. And you might for the stand you might have to, but we'll kind of just bite my ear. So try to do a sit and try a down. And then to get them to stand either from a sit or a down, usually what I do is I'll just pull their nose forward. So I just pretend I have a treat. And I just put my hand in front of their nose and just move it forward. Usually that's enough to get them to stand up. So mark as soon as they do the position we're trying to get them to do. So if we're trying to get them to stand, as soon as they come up with all four feet on the ground, you can mark that, feed them a treat. Nice. Good boy. Oh, that works. Yeah. Hey, if that works, do it. Yay. Good girl. You're quick with, yeah, you're quick with good timing, though. You clicked as she stood up, but before she sat. Yeah, you were fine. Yep, so you just need to capture it as soon as she stands. <laughs> it's a special moment thing, right? Hi. Oh, boy. There you go. That's okay. Because it's week one. All right. So, as you guys are working on this, what I want you to do... Well, let your daddy get you back first. What I want you guys to do is, if it's a behavior that's super reliable... I think the little of sitting down is pretty reliable. So for those two, instead of giving them a treat every time, I want you guys to become variable with it. So, make Okay. So every once in a while, make sure you do, though, to keep those solid. But for stand, you can be using that just to get it really reliable. So feed them a treat every time for standing. Okay. And same with Bailey, because those aren't very strong behaviors yet, that stand. But for sit and down, what I want you guys to do is be variable with it. So maybe give them a treat, and then skip two, give them a treat, then maybe skip one, give them a treat, then skip three. So don't make it, you know, skip one, skip two, skip three, skip four, but kind of jump all over the place with it, so they never know when they're going to get a treat for it. Okay. So what is asking at what point do you name it, Stan, when you're sure you can get her to do it? 
So if you bet me 20 bucks that 80% of the time you can get her to stand up, then go ahead and name it. But name it while she's in the act. Right now, you're busy capturing it at the exact moment she stands up because she pretty quickly defaults to the back to the set. Yeah. So, if you're 80% sure she'll do it, then start adding in a word. Yeah. I gotta go. Okay. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be here the whole time. That was great. Thank you. Awesome. You guys did really good. I, I can't remember your name. Lynn. Lynn, nice to meet you. And Bailey. Yeah. There's a clip on that gate. Okay. Just at the very top. Good night, guys. Right. So. So I think if you just back up and kind of use your hand to kind of draw her with you, that'll help. Because you're taking one step back, then you're stopping. So I think if you kind of, you know, and move your hand towards you, that should help. It's like the common, you're just trying to draw her towards you. Okay. Yeah. And pretty quickly you can fade that. Good boy. Nice job, Hugo. Oh, good boy. Good. Boy. Good boy. And something that might work for him, because I'm just watching how his body's working, to get him to stand, try moving into him, and see if that makes him back up into a stand. Oh, okay. Because just the mechanics of the way his body's working, it almost looks like he's doing that more easily. Whereas Bailey's doing it easier coming forward. He goes, hey, I don't know. <laughs> he goes, my green got tired. Oh, there you go. Good boy. Good boy. Wish I do this. No? Wish I do this. Ah, oh, there we go. Tell him. Yeah, so just play with it and see kind of how it works best for him. Yeah. Yeah, because he's just, when I was watching him a couple times, he did, he, he like, backed up when he got up into the stand. And some guys that's easier for them. They're not all the same. Hey, that looks nice, Lynn. Good job. Good. All right. Nice. Good. So give them a little act for a sec, you guys. That's nice. Very good. So when you're practicing these things at home, especially behaviors that you know they already know, like sit and down or settle, whatever you're calling it, if you're sure that they know how to do it, start being really careful about how many cues you're giving. Like, are you asking for it three times? Are you asking for it two times? Ultimately, we want you to be able to ask for it once and get them to do it. Because when you do the test, I and mean, we did this in Bachelors 2, each cue counts. So for most of them, you're allowed two cues or less. So just kind of start to be aware of that in the back of your head, how many cues you're giving for each behavior. Because what starts to happen is if you give multiple cues, then they don't do the behavior until they get all those cues. Because they're like, oh, every time you ask me to sit, you say sit three times, but sit, 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 not just sit. Right? And so we don't want them to get into that pattern if we can help it, because then we've got to undo that and get them back to the one. So part of it is, if you're sure they know what you're asking, ask for it, then wait until they do it, and then mark the second they do it. Because by doing that, you're going to teach them to do it more quickly. They're going to go, oh, the faster I sit, the faster you say good, and the faster my treat shows up. So if you're having trouble having to repeat cues, then go back to rewarding more often because then you'll get a faster response to them. Good. These things are doing nice. That's really good. Good job. So one of the games in the PhD is 
a sit game, so getting them to sit. But it's how many different ways can you make yourself look or how many different things can you do and still get them to sit. So it's things like, can you do it if you've got your hands over your face? Can you do it if your hands are behind your back? Can you do it with your hands in your pockets? Can you do it if you're sitting on a chair with your hands underneath your legs? Can you do it if you're jumping on one foot? So it's, that's part of the proofing thing is, and we've done it in companion manners that you guys both took with our stay. Remember we talked about being crazy and doing weird things like clapping our hands and jumping up and down and, yeah. So it's starting to incorporate that is, can we make them sit no matter what we're doing with our body? So if you're sure that they know it, and you want to, and I think they both do, and you want to start playing around with it, you can just try different things. You know, sit in a chair and ask them to sit. Stand on a chair and ask them to sit. Stand on one leg, ask them to sit. So you can just mess around with it, make it fun. Because it's another way you can kind of incorporate it into this game so it's not so boring for both of you. Just mix it up. Make it kind of crazy. And that'll help. All right. So, last thing I wanted to do today was work a little bit on hand targeting. Because this is one of the bonus exercises that you can do for masters and for PhD. So for masters, it's them targeting your hand with their nose. For PhD, it's whether they can target strangers' hands with their nose. So being able to transfer that behavior onto somebody they don't know. So, have you ever done hand targeting with him? Very little. You guys have done it. Yeah, because we did it in agility and we've done it for other stuff. So for her, we'll make this game a little bit harder. Obviously, there's distraction. So we'll start kind of low-key and then work up to moving around with her and seeing if you can get her to do it, like up high, down low, behind your leg kind of thing. Okay? But start out just with the basics. Make sure she's still doing it okay here. For him, what I want you to do, because we're in a distracting environment, is take your hand, put it down in front of his nose. As soon as he makes any motion towards your hand, even if he hasn't touched it yet, I want you to say, good, and then feed him a treat. And then if he's getting pretty good at touching, because you've done a little bit with him, right? So if he's getting pretty good at that, then you can start making it a little bit harder by moving your hands, like, six inches away and letting him move to touch it. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. Good. There, good girl, Bailey. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's a little easier. I was going to say, is that a cue for something else? Yes. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. So maybe try turning your hand sideways. There you go. Good job, Bailey. And you might try having her in a stand if you're going to try and get her to move, just to make it a little bit easier, and she's not stuck in her sit. Good. Oh, there we go. Good job, Hugo. I don't remember this game. Nice. Good. Nice. Perfect. And that's what I was going to say, Todd, is you can try putting your hand a little bit lower, or maybe a tiny bit higher. Not so much that you have to jump, but that you can reach a little bit. There we go. Good job, bud. Good job, kid. Good job, Bailey. That looks nice, kiddo. Good. Do you guys have a word for this yet? I think you could add one. She's doing it reliably enough. Yeah, I use touch. You could use whatever you want. I mean, for Diva, I use nose just because I've taught her to touch with all kinds of different bodies, body parts. So she'll touch with, like, her feet, or she'll touch with her nose, or she'll touch with her shoulder. So for nose, I use nose. But it's up to you what you want to name it. But I think you could add in a word, so you're going to add it as she's heading for your hand. Yeah, I think she's reliable enough you can do that. Good job, Lynn. Good boy. Yeah. Nice. Good 
because I'm getting tired of periods. My brain hurts. And there's a fly on me. Good job. So at home, Todd, if he's doing this really regularly, hi, buddy, and you're pretty sure, like, 80% of the time that he's going to touch your hand if you put it in front of him, then you can start thinking about adding a word in. So naming it something. And so for some of my dogs, I call it touch. For other dogs, I call it nose, just because I've taught them to touch things with different body parts. So I usually just name it by the body part. You wouldn't name your part. You can name it whatever you want. Yeah. I would want that your hand would be a Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. He does really well with the one word. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this can probably be turned into a greeting behavior, too, instead of jumping. You can just tell people, because most people will stretch their hand out to their dog anyway yeah. when they're greeting a new dog. So if he understands, oh, go touch your nose, then he's going to be thinking about doing that instead of jumping on the people. So that will really help with his greeting as well. That's yeah. Yeah. Give him a different alternate behavior. There you go. Good. All right. Let's give these guys a rest, cheek guys. That was nice. Yeah, so did you, though. <laughs> he kept landing on his butt. All right. So, I think we're going to stop there because my brains are really kind of starting to fry. It's harder being outside with all the distractions. We have birds. We have wind. We have a sprinkler. Flies. And with just a few of them, they're getting an awful lot of working time. So I think they're doing really, really well at that. So for next week, I want you guys to bring a long line if you've got one. Um, gloves if you need them. Just depending on your long line, if they move through your hand at a high rate of speed, I don't want you guys getting burned. So always something to be careful of with your long line, depending on what it is. Um, so try and remember to bring that next week. Um, other things I wanted to talk about is stuff that you can incorporate during the week that will help with the test items. So one of them is getting your dog to wait in the car before you invite them out. So I would incorporate this in every day, every time you bring your dog out of the car, because if you incorporate it and just make it what we do every time, they're not even going to have to think about it. If you forget to ask them to do it, they're still going to do it because it becomes habit for them. So for the test item, what happens is you need them to stay in the car. You're going to open the door, and you can ask them to wait. But they need to wait in the car where you stand five feet away for five seconds before you release them. That's the test item. So that's what we're working towards. They're going to be on a leash for the test. Oh, I open the door, beat her up, Perfect. ask her to wait, and then have Right. So she's waiting as you're leashing her? Cool. As long as you're not, like, manhandling or trying to keep her in the car. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. But for the test, you're going to wait five feet away for five seconds before you invite them out. So this brings up something to think about is your release cue. What word or how are you going to invite them to come out of the car when they're allowed? So I always mention this to my students just because it's kind of food for thought, is when you're picking your release cue, be careful what you pick. A lot of people use the word okay. The problem with it is a lot of people also use that in everyday conversation. So if somebody's walking by on their cell phone and saying, okay, I'll meet you in five minutes, is your dog going to release off that? Some dogs won't because they know the context. They're waiting for you to release them. But for some dogs, that's enough of a hair trigger for them to make them jump out of the car. So just I'm throwing that out there for you guys just to consider when you pick your release words what you want to use. And I don't care what you use. It could be banana. Makes no difference to the dog. They just understand whatever association you make with a certain word. So they don't understand English. It makes no difference to them. Like I said, banana works just fine. Does not matter. So incorporate waiting in the car. So when you guys get home today, you can start right then. The other thing is from the bachelor's level, waiting at the door. So still incorporate that at every single door or gate you go through. If you practice that, it just becomes second nature for them. Which you guys, I know you guys have been practicing that coming in for agility. And she pretty much does it without you asking. Most of the time. Can you? Nice. Okay. Yeah, so incorporating that, because when you move to the master's level, we escalate the waiting at the door a little bit, in that you open the door, they're waiting, and somebody's going to walk by on the inside of the door. 
and they can't come here until you invite them. So it's like the bachelor's level, but we've added the distraction of somebody walking by. So if you guys incorporate that, then that will become kind of second nature for them. Okay? So waiting in the car, waiting at the door. The other thing you can, guys can kind of work on is, you know, just the handling. So anytime you reach down to pet your dog, this is perfect. You're doing exactly what you should be doing is, you know, making sure you pet all of her parts and making sure she's comfortable with that. And if you turn it into kind of a massage, they think it's pretty awesome. They think that's a really good thing. So just incorporate it anytime you pet your dog. So I've been watching you and both of you pet your dog a lot, which gives you a lot of opportunity to practice handling them. Just make sure you touch all different parts and don't just always pet their side or always pet their head or always pet. But yeah, what you're doing, going for her paws, going for her tail. Yeah. Because then this makes it super easy for other people to come and start handling them too. Because it's a nice calming thing for them, not a crazy, oh my God, people are touching me. It's so exciting thing. Yeah. So it's just really nice. Good job, guys. All right. Do we have any questions before you guys leave? I was going to email them to you, if that works. Because if I figured if I handed you paper outside and it was raining or windy, or it, yeah, it would be too hard to keep track of. Yeah, so I will email you guys handouts, but basically everything I'm going to be emailing you is all on that My Dog Has Class website. It's findable on there. It's just buried in, like, the student handbook or it's buried in the overview handbook. But I'll just pull them out and email you the specific pages that you guys just need to work on. behaviors that the dog just offers to you, whether it's a sit or a down, and should you reward it, because you don't always reward it. You don't have to reward it with, like, food or toys or anything like that, but acknowledging it is good. So if you see them just doing this, just go, good boy. Nice job. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to, I mean, it depends what you think of as a reward. For me, a reward for my dog is anything they like. Anything, right? If they like sniffing, that's a reward. If they like food, obviously most dogs like food, so that's definitely a reward. But even just me acknowledging them is a reward. So, I mean, if they do this, you can just look down and go to the dog. Like, oh, that's nice. I like that. You know, and, but it doesn't, you don't have to touch them. You don't have to go over there and feed them. But just acknowledge the good behavior. And that's a really good question because what happens is when you acknowledge behaviors, those are the behaviors that they're going to keep offering to you. If you only ever acknowledge them when they jump up on you, guess what they're going to keep doing? Yeah, because it works. Because, and jumping up is a great example because what usually happens is dog jumps up, what's the first thing we do? We look at them. And we talk to them because we're trying to tell them to get off. And when we touch them, and we push them off. Well, you guys have two breeds, so you don't care how you touch them. They like anything. So if you're pushing on them, they think that's awesome. Yeah. So we just gave them basically a reward, three different ways for behavior we don't want to keep continuing. So that's why I say jumping up is a perfect example because we immediately do three things we shouldn't. We look at them, we talk to them, and then we touch them. But if they offer you this and you reward them for this, you're going to get this a whole lot more. And you guys know this from companion manners when we taught the settle. How did we ask for that in the very, very beginning? By ignoring them, right? And as soon as they did it, we acknowledged them by throwing food their way. And now this is becoming a default for them. They're like, oh, you're ignoring me? I'll just chill. Yeah, which is good. Especially for him, because you want him to be a service dog. He needs to be able to, as soon as you guys stop doing, walking, doing something, he needs to be able to just default to chilling out. Instead of defaulting to sniffing everything in sight and, yeah, <laughs> visiting every person you see. <laughs>
personality is so sensitive and just love people so much. We sit us together. Uh, if a for dog or a therapy dog. Yeah. And there's no reason he can't be both a service dog and a therapy dog. I mean, as long as you've got specific cues to tell him which job he's doing. Or a different way of indicating to him, you know, depending on which gear he's wearing. Yeah. They can totally learn that because they learn everything in a specific context. So if you've got very definite context for him, they can do both, for sure. All right, guys. Oh, thank you. I think we're good. These guys did nice. We did. It didn't rain on it. Yay. I'm happy to have it that they're like, yeah, we would check it back. Hair and just split it that way. I think I, I think it went back. That that occurred in that. Probably. Uh, it is that's nice. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Work from it for sure. Horse poop. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew the horse poop was going to be a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Did you go need a drink before you guys go? Can we try? I was going to say, I still got water over here, too. Do you want this, kiddo? Do you want water? Okay, go back. You did work hard. School's hard on your brain. guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. You, baby.